Did you know that how well or badly you recover from COVID infection depends on the health of your gut microbiome? If you had the infection and have not, had not fully recovered weeks or months later, or luckily have not had the infection, but would like to reduce your chances of getting COVID, you will want to hear this information. Hello, my name is Dr. Iggy Suse, and I'm a functional or integrative medical doctor and have been in practice for over 35 years, treating patients and especially those with gut-related illness. Welcome to my channel, Gut Health for Life, where I will be discussing all issues related to gut health and the microbiome. What you will learn from this video is, number one, the severity or mildness of COVID is dependent on the health of your microbiome. And two, I'm going to tell you how you can improve the health of your microbiome. The information that I bring today is from a study on people who had survived COVID but had lingering symptoms that affected their quality of life. Other studies have revealed, and you may be surprised to hear, that over one third of people who suffer from COVID have lingering symptoms for six months or more after the infection has cleared. These symptoms can be breathing difficulties or breathlessness, fatigue, chest or throat pain, headache, abdominal symptoms, muscle aches and pains, brain fog, and anxiety or depression. As you can see, this is an important topic as such a large proportion, that is one third of people who have had COVID, are affected for six months or more. I am seeing an increasing number of people suffering from the symptoms mentioned, especially fatigue, breathing difficulties, and brain fog. The study that I want to talk more deeply about tells us how important the health of the microbiome is to help us recover from COVID infection. And perhaps we can infer how we can prevent getting COVID infection. The question is, we could ask is, how do some people recover fully and others don't? The easy answer is those who recover fully have a better immune system and so quickly overcome the infection. But how do they get to have a better immune system? The answer lies mostly in the gut. There was an interesting study that was published on patients with COVID infection admitted to hospital and compared with a matching group, control group, that is people who did not have the infection. I have the references to that study in the notes below. In this study, they followed the infection group and the control group for six months. Stool was analyzed in the microbiome at the start, one month later, and six months later. They ended up with three groups. That is the control group, the group that they had no infection, the group that recovered fully, and the group that did not recover fully. They compared the stool in each of these groups. Simply put, the control group's stool was diverse with high levels of beneficial bacteria that are known to have protective effect on the immune system. The people who had the infection fell into two groups, the group that recovered fully from the infection and the second group that did not. The group that recovered fully was about 25% of the COVID infection group. The group that did not recover fully at six months was the remaining 75%. I want to point out that these patients who were admitted to hospital were patients who were admitted to hospital with the infection. The study I mentioned earlier, where one third of people did not recover, was a large group of people that included people in the community. So back to the hospitalized group. The group that recovered fully, their stool at the start of the infection resembled closely with that of the group, but not same, as the control group. So they had relatively healthy bacteria. The group that did not recover fully, that is the 75% of the infection group, their gut bacteria was depleted of the beneficial bacteria that was protective of the immune system. By the end of the study, at six months, they did the stool test again on all three groups, and the 25% of people who had recovered fully, their microbiome was very similar to the control group that did not have the infection. But the 75% of people who had persisting symptoms, their stool microbiome did not improve. On another point, we know that most deaths from COVID were in the elderly, especially those in long-term residential care and those with other illnesses such as diabetes. With the elderly, 
A different study which has shown that the gut microbiome of those in long-term residential care is significantly more compromised than those living of a similar age living independently. So from the first study on COVID patients, we can infer that the elderly with the poorer state of their gut microbiome condition could have affected the outcome. But it is possible that other existing illnesses may have played a part as well. So what can those with persisting symptoms after COVID do to recover? Also, what can anyone do to improve their chances of not getting COVID infection? The answer is improve the diversity of your microbiome. To do that, for a start, it is diet. What you feed your gut microbiome determines what thrives in the gut. The good bacteria need different foods to the bad bacteria. Feed the good, they thrive, and the bad get suppressed. The reverse is true. Feed the bad and they thrive, and the good bacteria get suppressed. What feeds the bad bacteria? That may be obvious. High sugar, high refined carbs, highly processed fats, and processed protein. This is a typical SAD or standard Australian diet. These foods are pro-inflammatory and can damage the gut lining, causing a leaky gut that then allows bacterial toxins or other chemicals and toxins to be absorbed that then causes inflammation in the body. Your, body, your immunity is compromised, so avoid them as much as possible. Talking of leaky gut, my next video is on an in-depth look at leaky gut and does cover some little-known, very important details. So please kick, click the subscribe button below to not miss that video. Now back to the diet. What is good food? Simply put, they're whole plant foods, vegetables, fruit, especially berries and herbs. I'm, am I saying that you have to be vegetarian or vegan? No, but a large part of your meal should be plant-based and the variety of vegetables is important. The reason to have variety is that different bacteria thrive on different vegetable fibers. So the bigger the variety, the more diverse groups of bacteria you feed, the better your immunity. I'll be explaining the functions and the value of different fibers in a separate video. So when you go shopping, look at vegetables that you don't usually buy. There will be lots that you can add, but don't usually or never buy. If you are like my average patient, they rotate about 8 or 12 different vegetables a week. But to improve your gut immunity, you need to be eating about 30 different vegetables. I include herbs and spices in that 30. If you put your mind to it, you can have 15 different vegetables, including herbs in a soup or stir fry that could last you a few days. It's about consciously deciding to try new vegetables or varieties of vegetables. Buy the rainbow colors, meaning include different colored vegetables. If you're at a loss as to how to cook them, a good vegetarian cookbook can help you. Your gut immunity and your general good health is in your hands. You now know what to do to prevent or soften the blow of a COVID infection. It all depends on what you put in your mouth. There is a story that I would like to tell you of an old Cherokee teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside of me, he said to the boy. It's a terrible fight, and it is between, between two wolves. One is evil, he's angry, envious, greedy, and resentful. The other is good, but strong. He's peace, he's joy, he's love and kindness. The same fight is going on inside you and every other person too. The grandson thought about it for a minute, and then asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. When you next put food in your mouth, which wolf will you feed? Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.